Greetings everyone, this is Ahav Ever, from the Chronicles of Ahav Ever, and I decided to do a video um, about the question I've seen on uh, this forum that I'm sometimes taking part in, um, about the issue of a um, question that sometimes comes up of why is there human suffering? And often the question kind of dev devolves uh, on this forum in particular um, to the question of um, if there is such thing as a God, for example, why does that God allow human suffering to happen? Now, I'm not going to speak from the position of a, a god, for example, because I don't believe in the, the Western concept of such a thing. Um, I'll deal, deal, deal with it from two aspects. One, from a situation of saying that there's a source of creation, uh, meaning that there's something that uh, caused the universe to exist and that we humans don't get to define it because, um, you know, when we think about it, we just don't have that ability to, when we look at the bigger picture, for example. Um, and then from the other aspect, I'll look at it from the standpoint that everything is simply random um, and that there isn't. And this, these two points are kind of be intermixed in the discussion that I'm about to have. So to start off with, I'm going to show something that I think is going to probably be what I'm going to focus in on. Um, you know, I kind of like this format sometimes uh, of doing these videos that are a little bit shorter um, and a little bit more focused. So the picture you see here is an interpretation, again, an interpretation of how the universe came to be. Uh, meaning that the area here would be considered to be like what people call the uh, Big Bang in Hebrew. It's Mapatza uh, Gadol. Um, so Mapatza Gadol, you know, basically, again, you know, however you want to define it, I'll just say however you want to define it, because we're talking about something as, that's on the level of uh, billions of years potentially happening um, before, you know, humanity even exists um, in a way that, you know, we can't define it. And the main reason I think I would want to show this, because at the end of the loop, at the end of the uh, uh, cycle, so to speak, you have um, our situation as existing human beings on the planet we're on. Now, one of the reasons I present this is if you're dealing with the issue of why do humans suffer, I think the basic starting point is, well, how do humans even get here to begin with? I mean, if we deal with uh, this from just like, you know, essentially the cosmology of the universe, um, when you think about it, I mean, even in the solar system that we live in, for example, we are a very small part of what even exists out there. I mean, you know, as an example, if you take the solar system we live in as this being, you know, the sun, you know, you've got other planets here. It's a number of planets that are way, way bigger than the earth. And there's a number of planets in the, in the solar system that, um, that we live in that are, you know, I guess way more vast, you know, we have way more complex systems going on. And when you take into account just how small we are, even in the um, our, our solar system, you know, it's insignificant there's there's anything on this planet, especially living in that can think the way we do. Um, you take the solar system and then expand it out into like uh, the greater parts of the, the galaxy. I mean, we're literally just like a, a, almost like less than a speck. I mean, if you were like some like, let's say alien out in space, you would never know that there was life here. Um, so the first thing you, a person would have to deal with is the fact that uh, human beings don't really have to be here. There's nothing in the universe that requires people to be here. Uh, even if you look at it from the standpoint of the creator of, the, you know, of all things, I mean, the source of creation, the source of creation didn't have to create something. I mean, we don't have to be here. There's a, actually a, something that's taught by Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon, um, the, the Rambam in the Mishnah Torah. Um, and he starts it off with explaining that the creator doesn't need us. You know, the creator doesn't need in, any of us to be here. Uh, there's just simply um, a choice that the creator made to cause the universe to exist. But, you know, we'll deal with the, the source of creation situation later. So let's deal with that going back to our situation on Earth, so to speak. Okay, so let's consider the following. What causes human suffering? And I think the basic, I mean, me for me, rational uh, answer to that would be the fact that humans exist. Um, if hum humans didn't exist, for example, there wouldn't be any human suffering. Um, and if you think about it, uh, most species of plants, for example, don't have a concept of a developed concept, meaning something they write down, consider, they think about the concept of suffering. There's no like plants out there complaining about you know, plant suffering. Things happen, plants are here, plants are not here. You know, they produce more plants, so they don't produce more plants. It's just as simple as that. Um, when you think about animals, I mean, most animals don't contemplate their, you know, their suffering that, as far as we know. I mean, if they're out there doing it in a way we, we don't understand, then so be it. But they're not like writing, uh, you know, tomes of uh, documentation and information and interpretations on the topic. It just, you know, life goes on. You know, you know, things happen. Animals, you know, like basically uh, are born. Um, they like try to survive as much as possible, uh, eat, mate, and then the the cycle takes them out of the picture in some form or the other. 
uh, either due to being, you know, either in predatory situations or just simply old age. Um, and then the cycle just keeps going on and on. But for the most part, you don't have animals really complaining about it. It's just something they, they, they either survive it or they don't. So considering that, because of the fact that humans have a certain intellect that we think is, you know, on a certain level above animals or, you know, whatever, um, you know, we have the ability to contemplate things like this and to consider, okay, well, why is this unhappening? So I look at it from just a simple standpoint that, first of all, because humans exist, there's the potential for suffering. Um, just like there's the potential for happiness. I mean, who says we have a right to be happy? I mean, you know, what principle in the universe determines that what we're going through is even suffering? I mean, just because I feel like I'm suffering doesn't mean I really am. I mean, I could say, oh, I got a, like a migraine, a really small migraine. I'm really suffering. And someone else may say, that's not suffering. You know, you know, I had to climb a mountain with a migraine while having, you know, an infection, uh, while battling off uh, bats and also like hyenas. That's, you know, if you want to talk about suffering, that's suffering. And the next guy may say, well, I had to battle off being stepped in by an elephant while he'd being eaten by piranhas, and, you know, while, uh, you know, um, you know, like uh, arm wrestling a lion. You know, you tell me that's suffering, that's suffering. So I may say, well, I had to do all the things you guys just mentioned, you know, while, uh, you know, descending from space into the atmosphere. I mean, you know, I was burning and it was hot, you know, that's suffering. I mean, at some point, it just never ends. So let's consider a few things here when we talk about this issue. Okay, so human beings exist and the, the potential for suffering is there. Now let's bring in some other elements to it that I guess you could say um, somewhat touch on the concept of something beyond human beings that put human beings here for a reason. Um, one of the things you have to consider when you're thinking about this topic, and again, not trying to play favorites to any side, is the first thing that I kind of touched on, why is it that humans think that, that we shouldn't suffer? I mean, what if there is some you know, benefit to you know, some element of suffering, meaning that uh, a benefit of survival. You know, what if there's a benefit of uh, progression? Uh, that if people were pretty much like sitting on their laurels, they wouldn't know how to handle any situation if they didn't have to suffer in some format. Um, is it possible that humans don't have to suffer? That we just simply choose to? Uh, for example, let's say that I have an instruction manual that tells me like how to build something, and I decide to ignore the manual and simply build it any way I want. And I may say and complain like, okay, this is horrible. This is horrible that when I'm building is not coming out the way I want it to come out. Why is this happening to me? So let me say, well, you didn't follow the manual. The manual told you how to deal with it and you don't deal with it. I mean, so you're gonna have whatever comes to you because of the fact you're not willing to use the instruction manual correctly. Um, it could be that someone may have to find out, find out which one's the right manual. You know I mean? It may take some work to figure that out. Or it could be that people just don't want to have the right manual and they simply choose the wrong one because they want to choose the wrong one. I mean, there's a lot of elements that could fall into that um, particular sector of uh, thinking in this, in this particular question. You could also consider the fact that um, human beings have the ability to overcome all suffering. Uh, we just simply have to manage ourselves correctly, that all the information to do it is here. Um, the abilities exist, but it could be that, it, you know, that if every human being focused on a particular thing, um, you know, again, me not defining that thing and unified under that thing, uh, whatever the unity means, because again, that's just, you know, some general terms of throwing out that don't really mean anything. But if, if every human being considered something to be the important aspect of survival, it could be that alone could simply either reduce or help us manage human suffering. So for example, let's say that we're dealing with, you know, right now with the coronavirus. Um, and I mentioned this in another video about the coronavirus. What if instead of the spending that takes place on the military or even let's say entertainment, um, you know, things like, um, you know, even the internet, I mean, I'm, you know, again, just being, you know, throwing things out there. What if the resources used to maintain all those things in society were turned around and used for making sure that there is no such thing as a pandemic or a virus that could ever, you know, take out, you know, the, the amount of humans that it takes out or take out, you know, all of humanity if it could. You know, what if all the, the resources of the world were focused on that? What if like everybody's job in the world was focused on different aspects of survival? Um, so for example, what if uh, there was a whole industry for making sure that uh, meteorites don't hit the earth that could take out the whole earth? What if there was a whole industry? Um, and when I say whole industry, I'm not talking about like, you know, like something where it's like, you know, a segment of a space agency uh, where they have to fight for their budget. I mean, it's like, it's a fixed budget. You know, it's so important that everybody like, there has to be some segment of society dedicated to it. Um, what if, for example, there was some element of society that was dedicated, you know, full time across the world, you know, um, to deal with um, making sure that people are healthy and stronger than they ever were previously in previous generations. Um, and not to the level that you see now where, you know, again, we get hit by surprise with something like Corona. Um, 
I mean something a little bit more drastic and dramatic, for example, um, where like the same way that you have high tech industries that popped up, especially like in 2000, you know, the whole situation where a lot of the high tech, you know, thing like built up, got built up. And when the bubble burst, everything fell apart, you know, but what if those industries, instead of being focused on high tech, were focused, focused on survival, you know, and again, I'm just being real general because that could mean anything. Um, so it's like saying that every tool that um, is needed to deal with the realities of the universe could already exist. It's just a matter of people have to want them. Um, and not just like, you know, a certain group of people, not just like people talking about it and just wishful thinking, but people like actually putting them into practice. Um, you know, I mean, I would think of it this way. I mean, you could say, you know, what if um, everybody focused on, for example, in the world, having, making sure that everybody has housing, you know, basic housing. I'm really in big into the earth whole earthship thing um, that's uh, been started up in the States. And it's kind of been, you know, different places on the world, um, you know, and, and there's a lot of sustainability from that. You know, what if like, for example, most of human society focused on, on trying to survive properly in every location where people are found and not just simply, you know, building up cities and things like that, where a small group of people get the benefit financially from people living in apartment buildings that are like towers and from the food industry and things like that. What if, you know, the basic principle was, okay, we teach people how to survive on their own without needing um, a system in place to do it, you know, like a, a electrical system, you know, meaning an electrical company that provides you electricity. No, you, we teach you how to provide your own electricity. Um, you know, instead of saying, okay, well, you get water from a, a water company. No, we teach you how to get your own water you know, and survive, you know, raise your own, you know, grow your own food, raise your own animals, or if that's what you're going to do. We teach every single person how to do that. And that's what we focus in on. Um, you know, again, these, are, I'm not saying that I have the keys and the, you know, to all that kind of stuff. I mean, I'm not the person for that, but I'm just simply saying these are ways of looking at it. So imagine if most of society focused in on areas where they live near the ocean to say, okay, if there was a tsunami, we're going to focus on how we survive that, you know, how we overcome it, how we survive it, and how we prevent it, you know, whatever. You know, so there's one element where human society may not, you know, in our current era, be focusing on survival and maybe just focusing on, you know, having certain things that seem like to be the thing, the it thing. Um, and maybe that's a part of what the reason why humans suffered, you know. Um, I mean, you could even say that, uh, you know, one reason that some humans suffer is because there's some people who want other people to suffer. I mean, think of it this way. There are some people who play sports professionally and then when they get older and later in life, they've got all kind of, in, you know, like injuries that come back and haunt them from the time that they were playing sports professionally. And the reason why they do it is because people pay to see them do it, you know, so people are willing to pay, the, to, pay to see them do it. The people paying may be a part of that person's suffering in the future. I mean, you look at boxing, I mean, somebody gets hit in the head enough, you know, they may uh, develop all kind of uh, problems like later in life because of, uh, you know, being concussed, you know, and um, being punched wrong. But people pay for that to be happen. You know, imagine if you paid them to be a scholar. You know, imagine if people went to a, a debate of scholars and paid for that. You know, I mean, uh, on the level that they do sports. You know, people. Imagine if people like paid for like, uh, you know, kids to to, you know, be good to other kids. I mean, you know, I'm just again throwing just ideas out there. Um, so you know, there's a number of elements of it to where humans. Um, you know, this is a concept that does uh, exist in uh, Torah to Moshe that humans have the ability to survive all these situations. It's just a matter of whether we're really willing to focus on the things that will cause us to survive it um, rather than some of the things that may actually be the cause of it or may not give us the ability to survive it. Um, and that, you know, goes from every human top down, including myself, you know, I mean, there could be some things I focus in on. Um, and I actually had that happen recently where there were some things that I kind of um, paid a, a lot of attention to and I had to decide, okay, okay, these things are not so important. Uh, I need to focus on the things that are really are important and like spend my energy in that area rather than these other areas because they're not benefiting me the way that I want. And also, even if they did benefit me in a certain way now, they don't benefit me for the long run uh, for the future. And you know, there's some times where there's some things you get used to and you may say, okay, this is hard to not do this thing that I've been so used to for the last 10 years, five years, 20 years, you know? So the issue of suffering and all those kind of things are complex. And I think one of the silly parts of the argument is when people make it about the idea of a god, for example, you know, um, a supreme being supposedly, whatever English people want to say that word means. It means it doesn't have any meaning for me in terms of the, um, you know, if you've seen my video about Avada Zarah, I explain why that is there. But 
you know, my thing is just because someone th thinks that human suffering is this or that doesn't mean that there is a God, just like it doesn't mean that there isn't, or for example, it doesn't mean that there's no source of creation. And regardless of what people think, there is a source of creation, meaning that there's something that caused, you know, existence to happen. Now, whether you want to say it's a thing this or thing that or a sentient this and that, that's irrelevant to the, to the issue. If we exist, something causes it to happen. You know, whether you want to say it's whatever, you know, we're not at a level to be able to say, for example, where we are here, to be able really to define what's going on, what happened all the way over here. Because what happened all the way over here is so far beyond humanity that, you know, there's no other way to describe it except for what, you know, certain principles of mathematics, even this drawing is just an attempt at trying to like rationalize and humanize, you know, something that um, is way bigger than all of humanity, you know, so. Um, so to kind of sum up uh, some of these ideas, and I'm, I'm just kind of rambling a little bit because there's just that idea I had based on some things I saw on this forum that I'm on, is, you know, going summing it up, you know, the reason why there's human suffering is because of the fact that, first of all, humans exist, and humans have the ability to sit down and think about what's happening in their reality and define it as something. And, you know, someone throws up the definition of suffering and says, okay, there's a tsunami, I'm suffering. Maybe you're not. Maybe whatever's happening in the tsunami is just the best thing ever. I mean, it depends on what your definition of, you know, maybe there are, you know, situations where these things need to happen in order for humans to progress. And if we don't, if it doesn't happen, humans in our current iteration, for example, don't progress. Maybe there's a situation where humans, you know, have the ability to survive all these things, but we just choose not to use those tools, for example. Um, maybe there's a situation where the ability to survive has been provided, um, and we just have to simply decide as a whole to be able to do those things. And again, this is all general because again, we may have to sit down and take time to figure it out. I mean, that's one of the things about Torah Moshe, where Torah Moshe does not create a situation where it's like, oh, this one thing has all the answers, you know, meaning that the Torah, the written Torah was given by the creator of all things. But the written Torah by itself was not given to the, by the creator of all things to the Jewish people and to Israel in order to answer every little aspect of, of every little question. So for example, it's not like I can open the Torah and find out, okay, where did I leave my keys last night? You know, I mean, there's, there's a way that what the Torah would do instead is provides me with a way of thinking based upon analysis of it and analysis of the past, as well as analysis of the will of Hashem through, you know, learning and studying and also uh, questioning and also challenging to where I can develop the right mindset to deal with the reality of what did I do with my keys last night? Um, you know, so the same way, okay, we well, may have to look and say, okay, in this location, if I want to live here, what are the dangers? You know, I have to do a risk assessment, you know, I mean, where I work, for example, we do risk assessment all, all the time, um, based upon the reality that exists. And sometimes we you know, make mistakes with those risk assessments. Sometimes we do it perfectly well. That's a part of being human. Um, so it could be that simply, you know, as humans, we have to overcome these realities because they're there. They're, you know, it's almost like someone who's been to the military, you know, they don't just simply say, okay, everybody showed up to boot camp the first day, you're a soldier, okay, get to work. You know, it's more like here's some training, here's some challenges, here's some things that are hard, here's some things that are rough. And, you know, only those who can overcome these things are going to make it to the end of the line. Um, you know, life as in a sense could be considered like a boot camp. Um, you know, as humans, where we are in the universe, you know, we have to survive these things based upon the reality that we are created into or exist in. Um, you know, I mean, you could also look at it this way. I'd rather be on this planet right here, where it is from the sun over here, than be on this planet right here. Because if anybody knows anything about what happens on this planet here, there's a lot of things going on that planet that could basically rip you apart. And I wouldn't want to be a part of that. I'd rather be over here than be over here because this planet over here doesn't have the same kind of environment as it does over here. And being, you know, having to survive this here would might be way more difficult than this. And I may say, you know, over here, you people on this planet over here, you think you're suffering? Wait, do you come over here to Mars? You haven't seen suffering yet. Someone on this planet over here may say, you think you guys are suffering on Mars or on the earth? No, over here, it is hot. You know, stuff is melting. And over here, it's like, what are you guys crazy? And someone over here may say, we're on the sun, you know, game over, man. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. And then someone may come out and say, well, look, I'm over here. <laughs> you wouldn't know what it's like over here. So that's where I kind of look at it from that perspective, because I think that um, the question has elements of um, silliness to it. And I think it also, the answers that sometimes people give uh, are also silly, because I think some people are kind of answering it from the perspective that they have all the answers, even on either side of the issue. I don't have all the answers. I'm just being, you know, I'm just throwing ideas out there, you know, things that come across my mind doesn't mean I, I'm answering any the question. It just simply means I'm addressing it 
because I have to survive just like the next person, you know, I mean, like right now, I mean, I've done a couple of videos where I'm wearing a mask, you know, because I'm in an environment where, you know, with this whole corona thing, I have to survive it. Um, I know some people, and I can see my glasses keep falling off. I got to survive that too, because, you know, it's hard to get in there with the, with the mask and the glasses on. But, you know, if I got to drop my glasses 20 times in order to survive, I'll do it, you know, so, um, you know, I kind of wanted to do this video. I mean, it's, again, it's a little tongue in cheek as far as I'm concerned, um, because I think the issue or the question, um, is one of those things where you can't, you're not going to be able to answer this question in a way that's fulfilling for everybody. Because I mean, especially when it comes to suffering, everybody's got to deal with their own little like suffering in their own little way. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, if a person can get through their life and say, okay, I did it, you know, I, I did it the right way uh, to the best of my ability, you know, so be it. If a person gets to that one moment, it's like, well, can't go any further, you know, then they have to either decide to, you know, to give up or they have to decide to get the intestinal 40 and try and try their best to, to overcome. And if they don't, then at least they can say they tried, you know. Um, you know, so again, suffering, you know, I think a person has to take a very expansive view when it comes to this question and this concept, because again, uh, you know, no person has the answer uh, to the issue, but you know, what does exist is the ability to say, okay, this is the reality as I have it, as I know it, I understand it. I'm gonna go forward with what I have and do the best I can with what I have until something a little bit more uh, solid presents itself. So again, this is Ahab Ever for the Chronicles of Ahab Ever. And uh, this video again is just some ideas I had uh, running off the top of my head about the question of that people ask sometimes of why is there suffering or why is there human suffering? So take care, bye-bye.